Hey guys, welcome to the Toronto Star Test Kitchen. Um, we're here with star food writer Karan Liu and digital producer Tannis, and we're gonna hop on the trending instant pot. We're gonna do a 35 minute recipe, and uh, because it's been super popular over the holidays, even people at the star have been getting them, and uh, we just wanna show you guys, especially the ones who are just getting it now, how to use it from start to finish. So Karan, what are we making today? Uh, today we're going to start with an easy butternut squash risotto recipe. This is what the final thing will look like. I'm gonna to try to not spill it onto everything. <laughs> um, so the reason why I chose risotto is that it's fairly easy and for me, it was the dish that convinced me that the Instant Pot is something worth getting. Uh, by the way, we're not getting paid a dime from Instant Pot to do this. We paid for this too, right? So We all own our own Instant Pot. Yeah, now. we're actually losing money doing this. <laughs> so uh, let's, I'm just going to get started and then as we go on, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, the, the electric pressure cooker. So first of all, I'm just going to lift the lid up. And then what got people liking uh, this machine is that it does a bunch of stuff at the same time. It's not just a pressure cooker. I'm just gonna turn on the saute function. Mm. And I'm just gonna melt some butter. Just two tablespoons of butter. The recipe is online on the Toronto Stars page. And it's also in our post if you wanna click on it too. Mm -hmm. And feel free to ask comments or questions. Uh, Karan's just gonna set up here and then we're gonna answer all your questions, especially for those who ju are just getting used to it. So what pressure cooking is, is that basically it's creating a really tight, uh, airtight seal that really heats up the cooking liquid inside that makes it extra, extra hot. Hotter than if you were just boiling something uh, on the stove. So that increased temperature makes the food cook faster. So a lot of people have been asking me, okay, should I get an electric pressure cooker? And I say that electric pressure cooker, not necessarily Instapot, is that there's other ends out there that make them um, and I say well if you're doing a lot of like soups and stews and if you're uh, if you like to do a lot of big hunks of meats and roasts like pulled porks and stuff like that then you should go for then you should give it a try um, they're really good for making a lot of stuff so if you're gonna batch cook for the start of your week um, for lunches and things like that you can make a lot of uh, food relatively quickly so yeah I think that's one of the benefits of the um, pressure cooker as well yeah and Edie, you got a smaller model right yeah I got a three quart and uh, it's this, just me cooking but this one is a six quart and I know that they come as big as I think like eight eight yeah maybe there's also more. a five there's also a five quart model and then there's also a eight quart model I believe and they're all now I think a lot of them have all the different functions um, sometimes you can uh, get ones with Bluetooth. I don't know how wow. that would be. That would be like extreme pressure cooking. So you control it from your phone? Yeah. I think so. <laughs> That's yeah. interesting. So I guess what people really like about um, this is that okay. it has a saute function, which I'm using now. It has the electric pressure cooker function. It also has a slow cooker function. Um, you can also uh, use it to make yogurt. Uh, it has a rice cooker function as well. And so, you know, if you're living in an apartment and you're kind of limited on counter space, uh, this kind of is a multi-purpose cooker that a lot of people The really reason like. that I bought one was because I had a slow cooker, a rice cooker, I had an old manual pressure cooker, and I never used the manual pressure cooker because I had heard, as I think a lot of people have, horror stories about, oh, it blew up, or the pressure is really finicky hard to use so I never really used it I watched my mom use it like I think a lot of people did but I was very scared That's so when I thing. yeah and when yeah. I bought the instant pot I was still kind of leery about using it like I know that it was it's much safer because it is computerized and everything is sort of taken care of it won't let you open the lid or something before it's depressurized you're, you're not gonna hurt yourself yeah. using this if you follow the instructions and are careful. Right. So. Um, speak of instructions, I just added um, just an onion, some garlic, and some three cups of chopped butternut squash. Again, if you're just tuning in, we are making some butternut squash risotto, and the recipe is online on the star right now. And it's a perfect winter meal. It's super easy, and 35 minutes doesn't seem like a lot of time. Like, I could probably make this and get leftovers, even with my three quarts. I think that um, the 
good thing about the pressure cooker as well is that because it is so multi-use, you're able to saute right in there. And yeah. when I make risotto at home without this, it's just kind of like I'm dirtying four or five pots and you have to constantly watch it. That is one of the, I think the, you said, Karan, that the risotto is sort of impressive. It's nice. Uh, right. So when you're making risotto, uh, traditionally over the stove top, you have to keep stirring it to activate mm -hmm. the starch in the rice so that it'll get nice and creamy and all that stuff. But, you know, a lot of people, especially if you have young kids, you know, you don't have 30 minutes to, like, keep stirring and stirring and stirring. I yeah. don't even have young kids, and I'm <laughs> still like, oops, I was distracted by something, so. Yeah. So with this, uh, once you put the liquid in there, and then you put on the lid, and you set the timer, then you can go do other things. Yeah, which is perfect. And we do have a question from Barbara Simpson. She's wondering if this pressure cooker is if this is a pressure cooker and a crock pot combined is that would you say that yeah yeah so uh this instant pot especially um and a lot of other modern electric pressure cookers they also have a slow cooker function in there as well so if you don't want to use the um, pressure cooker function you can change it to the slow cooker function which is what a crock pot is it's crock pot is just the, the brand name of a slow cooker oh interesting so we could have um I think that like if you're going to make pulled pork in this and you want to make it the old-fashioned way, you want to make it on a slow cooker function, you can. Yeah. Um, but you can also make it in yeah. a pressure cooker. Pulled pork, I think, like takes maybe a little, 45 minutes to like took me. To, I think it depends. So minutes. The recipe times, a lot of things depend on how much meat you're using and if you're cooking from frozen, which is another thing that I think the Instant Pot is great for. If you have a frozen like hunk of meat that you just want to throw in, I can't tell you how many meals I've ruined by being like, oops, I forgot to defrost something. So I guess I'm eating whatever, the sandwich, instead of the delicious <laughs> cooked meal. Yeah. So it was really nice. I found like a bag of frozen chicken breasts the other day, threw them in the Instant Pot half an hour later, including, and that was including, I think, the pressurized time. That's something that we should um, specify is that the recipes don't always when they tell you, like, how long did this recipe say it was for, Karan? Well, it says, like, five minutes, but obviously, like, it's going to take takes more Takes time than that. because the pressure cooker takes time to pressurize. Mm -hmm. So once you put the lid on, it's going to take a little bit like of time to... Five or ten minutes. Right. And then the actual cooking time sets in, right. which is whatever you program on here. So it's not instant. It's, it's, it's not instant, yeah. but at the same time, it's still a lot faster than... You know, if you're to, to do it over the stove or right. in a uh, slow cooker, or if you're to do it in the oven, it's not it's not magic. But, but I don't it, know. I still feel like if you put frozen yeah. meat in, and you know, but it still maybe not even an faster. hour later, you can have a full meal on the table in that amount of time. Yeah, that awesome. saves me a lot yeah. of. One of our first photographers, Randy, he got one and he uses it just to make bone broth. <laughs> Wow. But that's like, impressive. He's like a health nut, so all he does <laughs> is use to make bone broth, and every time I see him, I'm always asking him, like, oh, like, what what have you been, you know, making lately in your um, Instant Pot? And he's like, no, I'm just using it for bone broth. <laughs> I'm just trying like to... Just for bone broth. I'm like, you can make so many other things with it. Mashed potatoes is really good, um, because usually you have to, like, you know, bring the uh, pot water to a boil, yeah. and then it takes 30 minutes to boil the potatoes till it's, like, nice and um, creamy inside, but I think with the Instant Pot, I think I programmed it to about eight minutes. Wow. And it was nice and uh, crispy and gooey in inside. It's also good for uh, eggs as well. I did hard boiled eggs. Um, it's good for cheesecakes. Those little, um, little, uh, mini like the little syrup. mini jarred uh, mm, cheesecake those things. Are those are actually, you can make I'm really looking forward to trying them. some of those things. The crazy recipes that I've seen people make, like, mm -hmm. I also know that it's a bit of a cottage industry. There's there are instant pot cooking classes showing up. I'm now. just gonna add the arborio rice in there, but two cups just to get them nice and toasty. Just so gonna get in there for a minute. And a lot of you commenters are saying how you got them on Black Friday. So um, I got mine on Black Friday as well, but I was a little bit worried just opening the box and using it because there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of different components, which is why this is a perfect starter meal. I find. Um, Tannis, you got it for Black Friday as well? I bought one for Black Friday. I don't think anyone's ever bought it retail price. I got, <laughs> on, I got it on sale as well. I didn't. I bought it on Black Friday, and it was on sale. And then I I didn't even use it. 
And I thought, you know what, this would make a really good gift. So on Cyber Monday, I bought two more for my mom and my brother for Christmas. Perfect so I hope they aren't watching. I'm yes. just going to add some miso, some white miso. I love using miso in my dishes. It just adds like a really creamy umami flavor. Mm -hmm. And just two teaspoons of Japanese soy sauce. I think this is going to, you know what, I think a lot of people buy this as gifts for people who maybe aren't super into cooking. Um, my brother is not, and he's he sort of hinted that he wanted one because he thought it would be great to just be able to throw something in a pot, put a lid on, push a button, and That's have it. at the time. Sorry. That's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> um, and keep cooking. Yeah. And then I'm going to add a little bit of wine. Risotto's really good if you add like a nice dry white wine. I actually love buying these little bottles at the LCBO because you don't have to open an entire bottle of wine. like yeah. actual wine, especially if you live by yourself and you can't chug an entire bottle of <laughs> yeah. wine. This actually measures uh, to three quarters of a cup, which is exactly what I need. So That's awesome. Yeah, and it's only like $3 and something, so you don't have to spend like 10 or $15 on a bottle of wine that you're not going to um, use entirely. Yeah. Or if you want to drink some wine after it, then sure. So Natasha has a question. She's just yeah. wondering, um, can you get the temperature high enough to sear meat? Yes. Well, the, uh, this has a saute function on it, which we used before to kind of saute the uh, onions and the, and the um, garlic. So yeah, you can use it to get a nice sear on your meat before you uh, cook it. Perfect. That's actually the function that we're using right now still is the saute. We're just cooking in the pot. Yeah. So right now, uh, I just add the wine. I'm just going to cook off the smell of the alcohol before I add the broth, and then we're going to put the seal on, and then, uh, and then we're, we we're going to see it work its magic. Yeah, and if you're just joining us now, um, we're in the Star Kitchen. We're doing an Instant Pot Live. It's a really popular item. Uh, a lot of people got it over the holidays, and uh, we're just wondering if you guys have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments section. Uh, the dish we're making is... Uh, just a butternut squash uh, risotto with a little bit of miso in there, so it's very creamy. Uh, and very rich and it's great for you know especially today I don't want to go outside Ugh, yeah this is the perfect meal it's for really today. snowy and I can't wait to eat it <laughs> there's some people in the UK watching so shout out to the UK Woo! Thanks for us. Um, but in Toronto and I think in the UK it's kind of snowy as well but I think it's it's snowed for sure yeah. and if you guys want to see a little bit inside the pot um, we're gonna try to show you a little bit of a zoom yeah yeah, we kind of have a little um, skeleton crew here. We don't have Martha Stewart money. So there you go. That's what it look. looks like. It smells amazing. Don't drop the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're making phone risotto today. Phone risotto. Okay. And it has such a nice color to it, too. So the uh, wine has cooked off, so I'm just going to add the broth. Uh, the recipe that I have on the star for this actually measures out to just one tetra pack of broth. Oh, perfect. So, yeah. Karan, um, this is the recipe that we're making today, but you've made other recipes in the Instant Pot. Um, yes. What kinds of things have you made? Um, so, again, risotto, I think, was the dish that really impressed me because I didn't have to stir and it came out, like, very nice. Oh, Kelsey's going yeah, we'll to break the camera. Guys. It came out quite nice and creamy. Just Yummy. Gonna... Yum. 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 <laughs> So I made, I did one with a lot of mushrooms. I love mushrooms, sauteed mushrooms and some green peas. And then I also did a gochujang pulled pork mm. sandwich that was adapted from a, a Melissa Clark recipe. Melissa Clark is a New York Times food writer. And she actually came out with uh, a pressure cooker cookbook this year, which I really highly recommend. Um, for people who just got one and have no idea what to do with it. Mm. Uh, she has, I think she has like 75 recipes in that book. Uh, so look up Melissa Clark as well. That's awesome. Um, and, what else? Sorry. And she has, she also, I, I think make, they also have some videos on the New York Times that explain yeah. um, how to make that recipe in particular. I've also made uh, chili, uh, which is really good because it can cook uh, beans when it's like dried so you don't have to soak them overnight or use canned beans, which don't usually have that great of a flavor as well. I've done mashed potatoes, I've done um, eggs, I've done the little um, like cheesecakes in those little uh, like mason jar 
cheesecake. Do you thingies. do you find your recipes like I? Sorry. One thing that I've noticed is that the online community is really strong. Yes. Oh yeah, I think we're all part of like the Instapot um, official community. Are. Community. So hi, hi everyone. There's watching. Thank you for all like the amazing recipes uh, that you really inspired me to make. Yeah. Uh, so now we're gonna turn on the actual pressure cooking part. So we put the lid on, and of course, I love the little beep that it makes. Yeah. It's such a little like a little it's robot. Like a da -da -da -da. cooking for you. Okay, so it's we're a gonna computer. set it for manual, and I want low pressure. Uh, seven minutes is what I like for a risotto that has a little bit more body. You don't want it to be like mush. Oh. So that means, all right, the timer's set. It's gonna start building the pressure now, and by that it means it's uh, the seal is on. The heat's gonna come up, and then once there's enough pressure on here, there's this little toggle. If Kelsey can bring the let's phone give you another over. zoom in here. A nice little zoom. Higher up, higher up. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna turn this around. Did not rehearse this. <laughs> okay, so you see this little toggle? It's on the sealing mode. This is venting mode, so that's for afterwards. So you want to unseal. And then there's this little like metal little knob. And then once the pressure comes up, it will pop up and it'll lock. And that's when you know that it's cooking. Perfect. So what I like to do now is that while this is building pressure, this is when I like, just like to clean up, do my dishes, tend to other things, answer some emails. If you have kids, it's time to like, you know. You could also, you know, not clean your kitchen. You could do something you fun. Can... <laughs> wine that you perhaps didn't use in your cooking or yeah. didn't fully use yes. yeah uh, lots of other stuff you can do and that's a nice I think also when you're cooking sometimes I'm cooking one thing and another thing at the same time this being something that I can just turn away from now yeah. is really helpful because then I can go do other things that I need to do and get done in the kitchen so yeah. and you have a free burner because you don't need the that's stove right for this. Um, especially if it's the holidays and you're cooking for a lot of people, you know, and you have, you know, other stuff that's hogging up the stove, at least this one can kind of just put it on your counter Perfect. and just put it on the side and just not have to deal with it. So Brian actually has a question. Um, he says, I'm so busy this Christmas. How fast would a risotto cook and how many does this recipe serve? Okay, so this recipe serves about six to eight people okay. or like six, six really hungry people, I would say. Um, so all together, uh, if you've kind of joined us from the beginning, it took about, I would say, okay, let's say 10 minutes just to like chop up everything, to measure everything out. And then let's say another five minutes to saute everything. Um, and then to build pressure it will be about 10 minutes, another seven minutes to cook, two minutes for release. So all together, I would say 30 minutes, but a lot of it, you're actually not doing anything. A lot of it's just kind of like waiting which you can do which you know at this point you can use to tend to other mm -hmm. dishes or get other stuff on your holiday to-do list out of the way that's perfect and uh there's other people asking if i mean does this replace everything in your kitchen yeah <laughs> there are, i think there are some limits to uh <laughs> pre pressure cooking that you can't really do on here for example if i'm roasting a chicken i love the, the crispy yeah. papery skin and you're not gonna yeah. the best part. To and be you're not gonna get that in here just because all the moisture is sealed in. There's no um, like escape like anywhere for the liquid to go. Yeah. So you know if you're doing a chicken in here, which you, you can't actually cook a whole chicken in here, you'll have to finish it in the broiler. If you like that crispy. Yeah. I mean, I made so I recently made pulled pork, mm -hmm. and one thing that I did was I mean, I love it, but I also. I'm able to use my oven, so once it's <laughs> once it's done in the instant pot, I took it out, put it on a cookie sheet, put the sauce on it, put it under the broiler for five minutes, and I got those you know sort of crispy burnt ends that are so oh, good so in pulled pork. Yeah. So I think that like it doesn't replace your oven or your stove, but <laughs> it's um it's, it's pretty handy. Yeah. Also, the don't deep fry. I think that's the thing that um a lot of user manuals caution against do not deep fry an electric pressure cooker because heating oil beyond the normal boiling point it's basically a huge risk for a giant scalding oil explosion oh my God. actually so house. 
but I heard that there are deep fryers that can, not that you can personally use, they're industrial, right. um, but, and that comes into play a little bit in the history of pressure cooking. Can you explain a little bit of that, Karan? Right, so the reason why there's so much lore about using pressure cookers to deep fry is that because that's what KFC and Popeyes and a lot of Yum. fast food chains does. And it was actually Colonel Sanders who, uh, in 1939, uh, discovered um, electric pressure cookers, which were actually- Not cheap. electric. Uh, not, not electric pressure cookers, sorry, the old school ones that you would put over the stove. Um, they were featured in the New York World's Fair that year in Chicago, Chicago World's Fair. Oh, Chicago. Yeah. You've done your research. I'm testing I'm, you. I love the World's Fair. <laughs> I'm not incompetent. Why do you know these <laughs> You're just both, testing Sorry, sorry. Confused. Um, so, anyway. Colonel, so, Colonel Sanders, he wanted, like, a faster way of cooking chicken. So, he discovered that if you do it over a, a pressure cooker, it's a lot faster. So, during those early days of KFC forming, he would pack a bunch of pressure cookers in his truck or in the back of his car and just drive across the states trying to convince diners to like, Extolling the virtues to like of cook <laughs> his brand of chicken and like give them a pressure cooker. Awesome. So I guess he could have just sold pressure cookers, but probably chicken was the better. Yeah. That was the better, yeah. So like till this day, um, the chicken at KFC is pressure fried, but they have these like really specially uh, Big, made industrial yeah. ones that make it safe to operate. It's like, obviously don't do it not this. safe to put oil in this. <laughs> you can check online. Somebody has tried it, of course. YouTube. And uh, I, you will see the horrible results. So don't don't try it at home. Yeah, I do not recommend it. Yeah, um, we have another question. So uh, can you turn it on in the morning and will it stay warm until dinner, like a slow cooker? Yes, there is actually a keep warm function on here. That's this red button you'll see here. Certain things don't really sit well, um, as I've experienced firsthand. So when I was doing testings for this uh, risotto recipe, um, after it was cooked, I had like a meeting to go to um, on the other side of town. So I just kind of left it on the keep warm thing. And then when I came back, I took it off and the risotto just became like porridge. So uh, there are certain things that you, you wanna... can kind of just keep in there in the slow, like if you're doing a stew, uh, or if you're cooking like a, like a broth or anything Soup. like that. But any, but there are certain things that can overcook, like eggs. It's just for the example. same thing as using a slow cooker, right? Like yeah. if you are going to keep it in there, you have to understand that it's going to be warm and it's going to continue cooking the food. Yeah. So there are like a lot of um, cakes, um, egg dishes as well. Like they can overcook if you kind of just keep them in there yeah uh yeah and we have another question from Ooh. julie oh so the, the oh go ahead I just heard a little flip let so me show the, you uh, the little metal knob has kind of came up before it was down so this means that uh the pre the pressure is built up it's locked and now it's the countdown is begins gonna it's gonna start so. now we're actually cooking perfect we're cooking now we're actually cooking, and again, this is the time because Uncle Caron likes to <laughs> get his chores done. I, this is what I would do. I would start doing the dishes. I would start putting stuff away. <laughs> put Clean kitchen. Into recycling. Well, when you're, a, a, I think the good rule of cooking is that if you're not cooking, you're cleaning. Yeah. You're constantly like you're either doing one or the other. Uh, you know, as someone who kind of runs his kitchen, I'm like, I also, let, I say that my job is a food writer slash cook slash custodian. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's I'm, true. If it's I'm true. not cooking, I'm always just cleaning in here. It's so, easier to clean as you go, I find, especially like, I, I don't have this beautiful kitchen at home, right? I have a very small kitchen and well, I this need is to, great though. Exactly. Yeah, small kitchens. Um, Julie has a question. Hi, She's, Julie. Hi, Julie. She's wondering how would you compare the Instapot to the Power Pressure Cooker XL? Is there a benefit over one over the other? I've never used the Power Pressure Cooker XL before. Is it also a pressure? Uh, is it another brand of pressure cooker? I think it's another band. Yeah. yeah, but there's a lot of different brands. I don't know if there's. It's not just the Instapot, which is the electric pressure cooker. What other ones are there? I think T Fowl came out with one as well. well I think Crockpot has one. Um, any any yes. slow cooker brand at this point is probably entered into this market to sort of capitalize on this buzz, I think. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I found interesting about Black Friday and Cyber Monday was how 
they seemed to be over that weekend. There's obviously the Facebook group had something like thirty thousand new members. It was I, a I lot. Don't quote me on that exact number, but it was it a was lot. It was a huge thousands, new amount of people. So that tells me that even though we don't have exact numbers, we do know that the Instant Pot was within the top five. Um, selling appliances on Amazon during yeah. Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Yeah. Um, and I kind of think that like people were like me. Yeah. Either they were going to buy it and they wanted to join the group and sort of get a feel for it and talk to people who used it. Right. Or and, they were yeah. like, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think anything that gets people cooking right? into the yeah. kitchen and learning more about food, the behavior of food, and that. I'm super excited to have my brother be interested in this. Because then we'll have something to talk about in <laughs> family. I'm we'll just going like, to turn okay. off the control lock. That's, if you've heard any beeping, it's because of that. Um, also, so Kimberly answered the last question. She said, I had a power pressure cooker XL and it died within two months. Oh, oh so, no. So there you go. So, so there you go. <laughs> Thanks, Kimberly, for that wonderful piece of advice. So... If you're looking for gifts, um, another question we have here is, you know, a family of four, like two kids, and then also, I guess, a single person, like what size do you recommend? Yeah. Well, I think it depends on how much counter space you have. You, 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 you I have a pretty have small three kitchen. Quarter I have a three, yeah. Yeah. I live in a house, so like I have like a fairly big counter space to work with, so I, I do this. If you're feeding a family of four, I would say go with the six quart, because that's the one that most people have and like it's a fairly decent size and if you want I, mean, I find that the six yeah. quart is great i'm only cooking for myself and one other person so i like it because it gives me leftovers i can you know reheat food that i've made in this it's great um cooks about the right amount i think for yeah. two people with leftovers or a family of four i think the six quart would be more than ample yeah you can I'm, buy bigger ones but you can buy, go really extreme what's the biggest one I think it's like the eight. Eight quart, yeah. Eight it's quart. A big machine. Yeah, I would. Oh, I would say, look at your counter space, see what you have, um, see, make sure that it's close to um, a plug because the cord for the instant pot is about, I would say, maybe like three feet. Yeah, it's not. It's around also that. the thing that I found is that the only space that I have for this is kind of right under some shelves. And that's fine, except that I need to pull it out when we vent because um, I don't want the steam to be hitting the shelf. Uh, it's going to ruin the shelf, possibly loosen it. Um, so I want... You, you'll, you'll see the steam part, what she's talking about. Yeah. So I have and, to turn it when I do minutes, it. four minutes, according to the countdown. Yee, can't, I can't wait. That's the, so the releasing of the steam is something that I was a little bit worried about, I think. <laughs> um, I'm... Quite excited to show you. There's a couple things about the Instant Pot and, and other um, electric pressure cookers that I didn't know, and that is the natural release versus the quick release. Can you explain that yeah. a little bit, Karan? Yeah, so natural release is basically just letting it sit and letting the machine depressurize on its own. Uh, once the timer is done, the machine will turn off, kind of just keep. Uh, it'll be on the keep warm mode just to keep the food warm and then it'll just naturally de depressurize and that's what is called natural pressure release. So when it's naturally depressurized you just let it sit and then you'll see the button drop yeah. and that'll and take about safe. 10 minutes. Right. And then there's a quick release which will demonstrate and it's basically just flicking the toggle that I showed earlier mm -hmm. to the venting mode and then you'll see this big volcano whoosh, <laughs> of steam. And don't put your face over it. As don't put your I face over it. Again, hunters. reading the instructions. Yeah, yeah you're not going to get like a cheap facial out of this. <laughs> um, so Tam has another question. How do you rate the Instapot as a rice cooker versus a rice cooker that most Asian households have? Good question. Yeah. I've used it before and it does the job. Oh. It, it, it does the job. Yeah. Does like, it's, is it better like, I've than... Been... The rice cooker, or you would say about the same? I think it, I think that it, it does the same. I think the benefit of it is obviously that it does more than one thing. It so did, yeah. I had, a, like I said, I had a rice cooker and I loved it. It did the job extremely well. That's what it was made for. But it was another appliance sitting on my counter. So to have one thing that sort of did all three things, it was great. And yeah. uh, sorry, another question from Larry. He also purchased the three quart, so the mini one. And he's just wondering, is, are there any secrets to converting? I guess, I guess usually recipes are around this size. So, yeah. like, how, like, how do you find the conversion in most of the meals? Yeah, I haven't used a three quart. I okay. think I've, 
I think uh, afterwards you should try this. Eat, Let's uh, see if eat, I can do it. Yeah. In your. Yeah. I'll let you know, Larry, if this works. <laughs> <laughs> Three quarters. This should be it's able half. To... It's half. Yeah. So maybe I just half all scale. The yeah, half yeah. all the ingredients. Yeah. Um, do you, would you half the cooking time then as well, or? Yeah, I think I would play around with yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. I would say maybe like five minutes instead of seven. Okay. I think that's the tricky thing when you're doing um, instant pot recipes is that you can't really improvise. Can't take the lid off as you go. <laughs> you know, like if it's over the stove and I'm making, you know, like a soup or stuff like that, I can kind of taste it. I can be like, oh, you know what? Like you know, five minutes later, need some more seasoning, <laughs> or I can kind of like um, make it thicker or add some more liquid if I want it a little bit more uh, thin. But with this, it's kind of like baking. Once it's in there, like like hands off mm -hmm. kind of a thing so don't forget anything yeah once you can't go back in now i just want to know for the people watching who do have an electric pressure cooker what are the things that you have made that you really liked that you know maybe we should be making next time yeah. yes we can definitely we would love try to, to hear that. more suggestions for meals because so far i've just you know yeah i'm sure there's i'm sure and... there's people out there watching that you know use it every day or have uh, come up with some really great recipes that I would love to know, and I'm sure everyone else would love to know. So yeah, let yeah. us know. And we've seen some extreme ones too. And just to see what we have. Oh, we've heard, we've seen. I've seen people make lasagna in it, which I am very impressed with. Full size cheesecakes, not just the little ones. If you use a springform pan, um, and there's a trivet that comes with this as well. Yeah. Oh, um, timer's up. Ooh, Ooh, time's up. So now we're gonna wait for it to depressurize. We're gonna do a quick release. I'll do the quick release just because it's more exciting. Yeah. And, you know. And, so and then I'll actually show you yeah. what we Here mean by quick release. So, the quick release, you don't really want to do it if you're doing like very liquidy things like soups and, and, and stocks and stuff like that, just because some of the liquid can kind of escape. So, I'm just going to use a little cloth here just. We're just gonna flick this yeah. from. It's not that. It's, it's not super. It's not scary. <laughs> We're so flicking it from the ceiling scary. to venting. Yeah. So you basically do that. Ooh. So you can probably hear the hiss. I don't know if you can see the steam. Dramatic. Can you see it? No, you can't. Well, we can see it. Yeah. <laughs> so you can probably hear the the hiss of the steam come up. Um. So sorry. We're gonna show this, but you asked the other people what they've made. Yeah. Artichoke. Karina says artichoke. Lorraine says um, a chowder, which I think yeah, like a seafood chowder. Oh, that. Oh, I've done delicious. a chowder before. Yeah, oh, really? I completely forgot about. Wow, that. I'm and, impressed. I really want to try that. And Louise says lasagna. She's made lasagna and a potato soup, not together, just two separate ones. <laughs> <laughs> not the same. Lasagna and potato soup. Yeah. Can't wait for that recipe. Yeah, Somebody's gonna try it. Somebody's gonna try it. Someone's gonna try. There's some people I think that buy one just for desserts and one for other meals. So yeah. There's people with multiple ones, I think. Uh, no, so, well, maybe they do have multiple ones. <laughs> However, um, in fact, I think that a lot of people do have those. But one of the things that I found interesting was people have said that sometimes the seal, yeah. which is silicon, yeah. can absorb odors. Yeah, so there's this, like, uh, if I'll, I'll show you when I take the lid off, but there's a silicon ring around the lid that helps seal in the flavors. And then, well, and it, the pressure the makes pressure. it, yeah. Uh, rather, and if you're cooking something that's very pungent, like I've done a curry in here, I've done uh, like a, a brisket with like like barbecue sauce and stuff like that. Right. It does kind of absorb the flavors of it. So a lot of people are worried that those flavors will kind of transfer onto the onto the uh, onto a dessert. Right. Like right. I haven't had that problem, but a lot of people just get one because. There are like a few bucks on Amazon. So you can buy a, a replacement ring, like yeah. and have two and switch them out. Yeah. Yeah. You okay. can also buy other things like a glass lid if you're just gonna use for slow cooking and there's a whole Yeah, there's like trivets and like there's like uh Which like you need if you're gonna cook eggs in yeah. here. Uh, it comes with a trivet. So now you can the uh, little divot has gone back down, meaning that it's safe to take the lid off. Let's so do just... it! And I hope we get a really good zoom of this food. Okay. So I'm just gonna uh, warn you that it's not gonna look like the risotto in the plate when you take it off. You'll see that a lot of liquid, thank you. You'll see that a lot of liquid is at the top and that's just because it hasn't been stirred. Once I give it a nice stir, that smells the so rice good. will, will uh, absorb the rest of the liquid. 
and a lot of it will kind of help evaporate and dry off so that actually look like the risotto that you would see at a restaurant. I'm pretty impressed that this has taken, that we've done this in this amount of time. Yes. That's... Like I know that Quran prepped a little bit before we got here, but. Yeah. So I'm just going to add the cheese, the recipe, which is posted online at the star. And it's in the comments too. Oh, in the comments. Yeah. Great. I call for, you know, I say half a cup of Parmesan. Quran, I like that you just eyeball it. You're like, this is about that. And if I have a little bit more, it's not going to kill me. <laughs> yeah. It's good. I, I, I say half a cup, but I, you know, we in just... the recipe, I say, like, you know, add more if you like. Some people like it uh, very cheesy. Love those. Yeah. Um, so Julie says, I've always cooked with a traditional pressure with traditional pressure cookers. Mm -hmm. Would the times be the same? For example, I also do potatoes five minutes under pressure with the quick release. Yep. Is it the same with the instant pot? Yeah, same time. Oh, that's awesome. Same time. And there's a like uh, like we said before, there's like an entire cottage industry, I guess, uh, devoted to pressure cookers now. So that you'll find a lot of cookbooks, a lot of community forums, a lot of blogs devoted to it. So you're I going to- I think I'm now a member of two Facebook groups. You just yeah, for recipes and I am super impressed by what you guys come up with and where you find these things. I'm like, wow, I gotta, I gotta really delve into this. Yeah. Can you guys repeat what's in there? Okay, so what's in here is that we have, well first we melt some butter, we uh, sauteed some onions, garlic, and butternut squash, a little bit of thyme, uh, and then some arborio rice, a little bit of white wine, uh, chicken broth, you can also use vegetable broth. I did one with uh, vegetable broth yesterday and it came out very delicious. Um, and then I added some parm. If you want to make it vegan, you can substitute it with nutritional yeast. I've done that as well. You can find nutritional yeast at uh, health food stores. Oh, and the one the other thing that we have in here is the miso paste. Oh yes, miso paste, sorry. I like to add a little bit of miso paste and soy sauce in here just to give it a little bit of creamy, rich umami flavor. You can't like taste the miso in here, but it does add a little bit of extra something. It adds a little something. something. Yeah, I think um, miso is something that I always like to use in, in a, lot of, a lot of dishes. So if you're just joining us now, we're getting towards the end of our 35 minute butternut squash and uh, miso risotto recipe. Um, the size that we're using, uh, Anna has a question, is a six it's quart, a right? Hot. Yeah. <laughs> ah. It's hot. But yeah, it's a, it's a simple meal. Like I, don't, I wouldn't feel intimidated making this. And uh, No, yeah. I, like, I think that that was one of the things that I was really worried about was what am I going to make with this? I'm so like, it sort of sat on my counter for like a week because I was kind of like, I don't know. I don't know what to make. Um, went online, found a couple recipes for pulled pork, tried it out, was pleasantly surprised at how easy it was. And I was not intimidated after that at all. So I think that this is something that like, I really don't think that you can screw this up. Maybe like a really you... good starter? Yeah, 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 a great starter meal. Yes. Ooh. And it is gonna so start plating so now. Oh my god. I'm so you excited, know. I've been waiting for this moment. Yeah, to me a good risotto has to still have some body in it. You don't want it to look like porridge. And it also sh should kind of like, kind of like, just settle into like a nice little Puddle. Like you shouldn't be able to like. <laughs> That's how I feel right now. Just <laughs> settle into a yeah. nice little puddle wait. of risotto. Yeah. Yeah, because like sometimes I go to um, a restaurant and like they'll put it in like molds and stuff like that, a mm. molded shape. That means it's too dry. It it should still have a little bit of liquid. Um. So if you guys are looking, the recipe is actually posted to the top, and we have a couple recipes sprinkled out through our comments. Um. Some people are saying that this machine is still a little bit intimidating, which is. Like, I understand, but also, she's just wondering how do you convert times for um, conventional recipes for the pressure cooker, and I think there's a lot of groups that, like, lasagna made in this, like, in the oven versus lasagna in here or something like that, but yeah. I think there's, all the groups have all the recipes. A lot of it's just trial and error, to be honest. Um, there are so, there's such a big community now yeah. of um, pressure cooker recipes and stuff like that, you can use that as a baseline. So it's really helpful to go online yeah. and be able to say to everyone, how do I do this and have a bunch of responses like, yeah, I'm not because so I'm not sure about all of those things. But I know that there's a place that I can go to and be like, hey, guys, I'm making this recipe for lasagna, but I want to make it my instant pot. So how do I do that? What's the process? There's going to be a ton of like troubleshooting tips yeah. and like ways that you can do a certain thing that maybe you didn't know about before. So I think that if you are looking for that, 
the groups are great for that. And yeah. you can just search that into Facebook. It's very simple. And I, I find that the responses are overwhelming with people, you know, who've made the mistake or they just mastered Instant Pot. Right. And they just want to help out. And I think that that's super helpful and, and just really yeah. wonderful. Yeah. It's, yeah. So when you're I was, not cooking alone in your kitchen. Yeah. So when I was thinking of this recipe, I was like, okay, risotto, like, how long does that take? So I just did a search on Google and, you know, a lot uh, the one that I started out with said five minutes and then I made it. It was good. Some people said like, oh, I need a little bit more. So, how long so would I tried it, a bit more. How long would it take to cook a traditional risotto on a stove? I uh, think for one cup of rice, it'll take about 20 or 30 minutes, uh -huh. which is... But then you have to add all your prep to it as well, like we did. Yeah. 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 And then you have to, you know, stir it constantly. Stir, yeah. Uh, but you know, we as you guys seen in the so far, we've had a lot of downtime, which we could have done a lot. Yeah, we could have been doing tons of stuff. Come um, on, we could have cleaned your whole kitchen. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so are we gonna try this? Yeah, let's try it. It's All gonna right, be so hot, but yeah, I don't really care. Hot. So Ooh, I'm. Oh, this is the perfect meal for today. <laughs> it's so cold and snowy here. It's good for carbo loading. So yeah. I don't know if you, can, can you guys see this? Mm. Yeah, okay. mm. The squash is really tender, and the, so is the rice. It's, the miso is like, like you can take. It doesn't. It's not overpowering at all. But no, it's, but uh, you can tell it's in there. Yeah, it's, it's really, really hot. Adding it's a, really hot. Yeah, I'm gonna let's put this down for a bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's your favorite instant pot? Um, can, I guess group on Facebook. Do you, do you have one, or they're just wondering what? Um, I use favorites. so I use the the main instant pot community group. I think that's the one I'm a part of member of. Yeah, and then I Me also too. am a member of one that's in. It's called Instant Pot. I think recipes only, and I find that that's really helpful. There's a a lot of people use recipes from a blog. A woman, um, her blog name is I believe called This Old Gal. Mm. Um, she's got some great recipes. Uh, I and I used her recipe for um, pulled pork. So mm. there's a, there's also a. If you like any style of cooking, there's probably somebody trying a recipe with uh, Instant Pot. I ran across a blog that was doing paleo, um, and she was cooking uh, Kahlua pork. So that's something that I really want to try, which is like a Hawaiian uh, pork yeah. recipe. I'm sure there's like a lot of subgroups too, like for let's say like yeah. vegan um, Instant Pots or like vegetarian or pescatarian. Could you have made this recipe kosher. vegan? Yes. So instead of the chicken broth, I would use vegetable, which I've done before. And then instead of the cheese, I would add nutritional yeast, which you can find at health food stores. It's and not it, scary. It just adds like a cheesy... Yeah, it kinda, okay. It kind of looks like yellow like fish food, but <laughs> it, they taste like uh, Pepperidge Farm goldfish crackers. So it has like a little like cheesy taste to it. And I, I did that as well in previous tests and you just have to add a lot to it, but it does the job. Yeah. This is so good, you guys. Yeah, it's really good. Also, last questions. Uh, there's a couple more filtering in. Yogurt setting. Do they buy one with it? There's some older ones that you can buy that doesn't that don't yeah. have it. But have you tried? I have. I don't. I don't eat that much yogurt. <laughs> I don't really need to to make that much. But Fadi, uh, one of our coworkers here, he bought one to make yogurt because he eats a lot of yogurts and he's loving it. But for me, I don't uh, make that much yogurt. I can't. There so it depends much. how much yogurt yeah. you like to eat. Or, if, you know, I think a lot of people buy it for, like, if you're buying a lot of yogurt, for example, say you have kids and you're trying to get them to be healthy, you want them to eat yogurt, okay, well, it's probably cheaper to make your yogurt yeah. in go large batches yeah. than to, yeah. I think that the question is whether or not you should get one, is just look at, you know, what do you like to cook? If you're doing a lot of stews, a lot of soups, if you're doing a lot of beans, if you're doing a lot of broths, um, if you do like a lot of cheesecake, like eggy dishes and rice dishes, then uh, this would be great for that. It's lar it's good for large batch cooking, as I said earlier. Yeah. If you're gonna get into um, you do a lot meal, of meal prep, prep, yeah, yeah, which That's is really great, super smart, and saves you a lot. Why I don't do it yeah. as often as I should. So I'm hoping that this will change that. Um, I've already, like, I feel like when I made that pulled pork, it lasted for, you know, <laughs> six days and I was like, that's a lot. Yeah. That's and it's like so many meals. Yeah. Pulled pork is great because even though you're buying like a giant pork shoulder with one person, you're kind of like, okay, like I can't eat pulled pork sandwiches for like a week, but you can actually repurpose it. It's good on rice. Yep. 
Um, you can serve it with some avocados, with some beans, you can put it on pasta. And this is great because, okay, so you've had your bowl of risotto, which is delicious and I just want to keep eating it. I'm trying, really <laughs> restraining myself. I'm just eating it. Um, but then if you put it in the fridge the next day, you want to have a little bit with something else with a, maybe you want to use it as a side, you can do that as well. Can so you I think it's pretty versatile. Can you, can you do canning in this? No. I did some research. I really was interested in using this because one of the things that I like to do in the summer is can. Um, putting up tomatoes especially is something that I like to do. And I thought tomatoes can sometimes be finicky if you do a water bath canning. Um, so I thought maybe I'll be able to use this for canning. You can't yet. It's it basically hasn't will it just been explode? hasn't no I don't know if it will explode probably won't it just hasn't been tested yet oh like as far as like in the states the USDA has not tested it for safety canning okay. right yeah so like food safety purposes so they're not I'm sure they're in the process of it but it's not quite there yet so yeah. kind of disappointing but you know what I still have a regular pressure cooker and I could can salsas and and meats although I think that's a little extreme I even I know you can <laughs> but if you're gonna can like a stew or something for a winter um, you can still use a regular pressure canner to do that and Lynette is also asking what about fish fish it's a little bit harder because it's quite delicate and when you build up the pressure you can kind of just like <laughs> with the fish. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So for But you cook it from frozen like a salmon steak from frozen? I've done, I've done fish chowder mm. with uh, frozen cod Ooh, before. So that, so that worked out. But if you if you have uh, like a delicate piece of fish like if you want to do like a poached salmon or something right. like that then I would kind of stick with over the stove. Okay. Or sous vide which is a whole other Facebook web. <laughs> it doesn't Replace everything, <laughs> but it's a really great. Not way. magic pot, instant pot. Yeah, although. yeah, still pretty magic actually. Yeah, based um, on this recipe. Yeah, so uh, this is an amazing dish. I think it's a really easy way for you to start using the instant pot, um, and uh, it's delicious and it's good for winter, which is perfect for today. Yeah, we hope that it get people cooking. I think yeah. that's that's our main goal here today is to get people. Um, in the kitchen and just loving food and sharing food. And if you have bought one of these or you're thinking about buying uh, a pressure, an electric pressure cooker for um, Christmas for somebody, maybe this will be what tips you over to say, okay, yeah, I'll try it out. It's not that intimidating. I know there are a lot of buttons and a lot of settings, but like it's look, really our not faces that bad. are still intact. Yeah. We, didn't, <laughs> we didn't have a volcano Woo! of steam shooting up. Yeah, and, and, that's, and right. nothing exploded. <laughs> and like, did it. clean up. I just have to like clean the, the inner chamber and give the uh, whole thing a little bit of a wipe and then we're done. Perfect. This you... was so much fun. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you, you so guys. much for joining us. Um, all the recipes are in the comments. Uh, Karan is always making new recipes for Instant Pot. If you guys have great ideas, we can read the comments and see if we can kind of figure something out there. But thanks for watching and if you want to watch it all again, it's just an intro of how to make risotto. It's... Oh god, this is on the internet forever. <laughs> it's on the internet forever. Butternut squash and miso risotto. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Thanks guys. Bye. Bye.